Szanowni Państwo, bardzo dziękuję za cierpliwość. Będziemy zaczynać. Za chwilę rozpocznie się konferencja prasowa wieńcząca trzydniową delegację wspólną Komisji Parlamentu Europejskiego do spraw wolności obywatelskich i Komisji Konstytucyjnej Parlamentu Europejskiego. Za chwilę oddam głos gospodarzom dzisiejszego spotkania. Wcześniej jednak uwaga natury technicznej. Dzisiejsze spotkanie jest transmitowane na żywo na Europe by Satellite. Można też oglądać streaming na żywo na Multimedia Center Parlamentu Europejskiego. Również wszystkie materiały video on demand będą do pobrania z Platformy Parlamentu Europejskiego. Transmitowane są dwie ścieżki dźwiękowe w języku oryginalnym i tłumaczenie na język polski. Uh, I have to say the same in English, so we will start in a moment uh, the press conference um, uh, which is concluding the three days long stay of the joint delegation of the Committee for Civil Liberties of the European Parliament and the Committee of the Constitutional Affairs. I will give a floor in a moment to the hosts of this conference. Uh, but the technical information for you is that it's, uh, the meeting is being um, uh, broadcast live on the Europe by satellite and also by the media, multi, uh, media center of the European Parliament. And the video on demand materials will be available on the platform of the European uh, Parliament. Now I will give the floor to the hosts, um, to Mr. Lopez Aguilar, who is the chair of the committee um, on uh, the civil liberties, justice and home affairs of the European Parliament. Uh, then uh, the vice chair of the committee on the constitutional affairs, and finally uh, the, first, uh, the first vice president of the European Parliament, Mr. Otmar um, uh, Karas. Uh, Mr. Uh, López Aguilar, the floor is yours. Good morning and thank you for being here. Thank you for attending this press point in the premises of the European Parliament representation here in Warsaw. You're facing a European Parliament delegation official, European Parliament delegation in a European Parliament official mission. And I am honored to share this press point with my distinguished colleagues, Gabi Bischoff, Vice President of the Committee of Constitutional Affairs, and Otmar Karras, Vice President, first Vice President of the European Parliament. I am the chair of the Committee of Liberties, Justice and Home Affairs. So let me just state clearly that the European Parliament happens to be the only directly elected body in the European architecture. So we have full democratic legitimacy to represent directly 400 and 50 million European citizens, including almost 40 million Polish citizens, which are also European citizens. So we represent the Polish citizenship of Polish citizens. That means that we are not an alien interferings in a Polish matter. We are here representing directly the Polish citizenship of Polish, citizen, of Polish citizens, and we're also talking about European matters. Because ever since the Lisbon Treaty entered into force, with the European Charter of Fundamental Rights, rule of law, democracy, and fundamental rights are a European issue, European scale. It means that the European Union is not single market or single currency. It is most importantly values, principles, and the respect of the rule of law, democracy, the European way, and fundamental rights including, of course, respect of EU law, which is ultimately guaranteed by the European Court of Justice. And that is why the European Parliament officially decided to have an official delegation and an official mission in Poland talking about European matters, European issues. Because we have summed up throughout the years, we have gathered throughout the years concerns about developments taking place in Poland just like elsewhere, touching upon rule of law, fundamental rights and democracy. 
which is not simple rule by majority, but also according to the European law, Article 2 of the Treaty of the European Union also means protecting minorities and respecting political pluralism. And an independence, an independent judiciary protecting the fundamental rights of the EU citizens. And that is binding law in all of the member states in the 27. That is why in the Committee of Liberty, Justice and Home Affairs, we have put in place a binding legal instrument, which is the so-called rule of law, democracy, and fundamental rights framework, which is binding for all the member states with an annual report, which is presented by Justice Commissioner before the committee I chair, and uh, examining the situation of rule of law, fundamental rights, and democracy in all of the member states, all of the 27, including Poland. And in Poland, it's been noticed time and again that there has been an erosion of the independence of the judiciary. There has been a disciplinary chamber that has been declared not compliant with EU law by the European Court of Justice, a ruling of the European Court of Justice which is still to be abided by, which is to be uh, accomplished. And that is why we have been for the last three days in a very tight agenda, very busy and work-loaded uh, agenda, gathering the first-hand testimonies of scholars, judges, prosecutors, media representatives, academia, and uh, NGOs and uh, civil society organizations and human rights activists and official institutions as well, certainly, even the official institutions of the uh, constitutional architecture in Poland, just to take stock and update our knowledge of the situation in Poland so that we can carry out our work, which I remind you is a direct representation of the European citizens, but it's also a lawmaking work because the European Parliament is a lawmaking body. We do make laws in the European Parliament on behalf of the European people, of the European citizens. And that means that we have put in place a number of binding instruments, the rule of law, fundamental rights, and democracy framework, but also the rule of law conditionality regulation, which is binding law, that has been cleared by the European Court of Justice just recently as a binding instrument ever since it was adopted and entered into force January 2021. So we have these three days listened carefully and taken note of every testimony that we have had first hand. It's been a very interesting three days and uh, we have made the best of every slot that we have uh, had um, despite the time constraints. We have actually made very useful use, meaningful use of this, of this uh, uh, opportunity to hear first-hand testimonies, particularly compelling those, of course, touching upon the issue of independence of judiciary, the disciplinary chamber, and the disciplinary measures imposed upon judges or prosecutors abiding by EU law or applying EU law. That is a matter of EU scale. That is not a Polish issue. That is a matter of European scale, that is a matter of European importance, and that is why we intend to draw the lessons and the consequences of all the testimonies that we've gathered so that we can carry out the joint work that uh, we, uh, we have been unfolding in this field of action. And I remind you that a European Parliament delegation is just naturally a parliamentary representation which is pluralistic. So the, the, you, you're facing a pluralistic representation of the European Parliament consisting of members of different political families, different political groups. But in this joint venture, sharing a common goal, sharing a common commitment on the importance of EU law, primacy of EU law, relevance of EU law, respect of EU law, and respect of the rulings of the European Court of Justice, which is the ultimate expression, the guarantee of the primacy of EU law. Members of different political families, we all share values and commitment to a same rule of law, EU law, which is binding for all the member states 
including Poland, of course. Thank you. Now I'll pass the floor to Gabby Bishop, which will explain the vision of the Constitutional Affairs Committee. Thank you very much. And indeed, it has been uh, three days that were extremely important for the members of the European Parliament, because as it was already emphasized for us, the question um, really of rule of law is not a Polish question or a Spanish question or whatever. It's a European issue, a core issue. And especially as coming from the Committee of Constitutional Affairs, the question also of the primacy of EU law is of key importance here. And it's the basic also, the basis for the European project. And therefore, all the questions related to this were of utmost importance to us and also to see that it is also enshrined in the Polish constitution um, here. What I have to say, I'm quite deeply impressed because we met a lot of different experts and stakeholders, as it was said, and we have heard deep concerns really also about the attacks on one hand on judicial independence. I mean, this is a core issue. And on the other hand, it was already mentioned, we have the Charter of Fundamental Rights and we might have different languages here. We might have also different cultures in, in, in different areas, but we have and share the same fundamental rights all over Europe. And here we have also listened uh, to complaints also that basic values like uh, of equality, non-discrimination, and fundamental rights connected to this are not respected. Uh, and this is especially towards certain groups. We heard a lot of testimonies regarding the situation of migrants, of women in this country, but also of the LGBTIQ community here. What is also of great interest for us, because we will start an inquiry committee soon uh, in the European Parliament on the Pegasus, um, on the Pegasus spying, um, and the consequences this also has on one hand on media freedom, but also um, as we have heard here, spying of politicians during elections, um, also of prosecutors. This is something we will address and what we take with us are testimonies uh, and questions we will raise uh, in connection uh, to this also in the European Parliament from a European perspective here. Um, and uh, also for us it is very important to have had the opportunity to talk to different stakeholders, collect different views so that we can go home, write a report about what we heard here, and we will also do policy recommendations as we already did, especially also that we think that um, the council needs to move here um, and not just have hearings, but really um, on the Article 7 procedure, we need appropriate steps here because let me emphasize again, when the Charter of Fundamental Rights was established with this convention, many governments also at that time were very reluctant um, to have them legally binding, but it were the citizens that did fight for it with huge demonstrations, with huge initiatives, and this is something we need to protect all over Europe that these fundamental rights are guaranteed to every EU citizen, to everyone that is in the European Union, independent what nationality someone has. Uh, and therefore, I think this mission, especially at that time, is very important. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I address directly the Polish citizens because the European Parliament 
Mr. Lopez Aguilar mentioned it, is also your parliament. We are, as European Parliament, also responsible for the citizens, the Polish citizens. And all cases we are discussed, our common cases, it is our responsibility, our common responsibility, to strengthen the European identity, to reconstruct the rule of law mechanism. We visit Poland at the time of grave crisis in the neighborhood. We take part in a contest between democracy and authoritarianism. We, the war in Ukraine started eight years ago, not because of an expansion of NATO, as Putin argues now. It started because Ukraine chose European values and the European way of life for the reason that the Ukrainian people wanted political and economic associations with the European Union. This is why it is more important than ever to be crystal clear about our commitment to our founding values, to democracy, the rule of law, human rights, and all fundamental rights. The rule of law and the fundamental rights and the European parliamentarian democracy unite us. These principles are the cornerstones of an active community and of a dialogue in respect with another. These values define us more than anything else. The basic principles of these values are let down in our treaties, in the European Charter of Human Rights, in the European Convention on Human Rights. They are being upheld by our courts in Luxembourg and in Strasbourg and also by courts in the member states. They are working together on the same basic by judges, prosecutors and attorneys that defend the rule of law and protect our democracy every day. To hear that in Poland these members of the judiciary face intermediation and disciplinary proceedings is not only worrying but inacceptable. We can discuss at length various models of judiciary systems, but in the European Union it is not our subjective opinions that matter. We have the full trust in the rulings of the highest European court, the court of justice of the European Union, the, our court of justice. This court has the full authority to rule whether obligations from the EU treaties are met or not. And it is our most fundamental common rule that those rulings are respected. Ladies and gentlemen, dear citizens, in July 2021, the court ruled that the disciplinary system for judges in Poland violates judicial independence. This must not happen in the EU. The judgment of the Court of Justice of the EU of 15 July 2021 must be fully 100% implemented. 
We expect from the Polish authorities that they ensure this without any further delay. And we demand from the European Commission not to release any money from the EU Recovery Fund before these key rulings has been fully 100% implemented. When it comes to the rule of law, no half-backed solution can be accepted. And after these three days, I am sure that the majority of the civil society in Poland, the majority of all NGOs, the majority of the citizens of Poland are supporting the position of the European Parliament at the majority of the European Parliament. Respect for each other is the starting point of parliamentary debates. We were worried to hear about the lack of willingness of members of the ruling parties to engage with political and civic forces holding opposite views. Unfortunately, I must say it very clear, we have experienced this first hand as the executive and members of parliament of the ruling party have not been ready to meet with us. That is also a signal, but not a good signal. Commitment to our common values and the rules-based international order is also why we stand firm in supporting Ukraine, its people, territorial integrity, and the right to choose freedom. We condemn Russia for violating international law, for endangering the security, and for violating the sovereignty of independent states. We fully support that the sanctions will be applied because the European Parliament is always the speaker of democracy, the speaker of rule of law, and the speaker of our fundamental rights and human rights for everybody. Thank you very much, President. Thank you very much, Chairs. We will now give the floor to the journalists who can ask questions also via Slido application. Please, proszę o sygnalizowanie chęci zabrania głosu do mikrofonu, żeby tłumacze mogli przetłumaczyć. Proszę przedstawiać się, nawet jeżeli w Polsce wszyscy Państwa znają, siebie i redakcję. Bardzo dziękuję, redaktor. Maciek Zakrowski, Radio Tok FM. My question is to whoever you wants to answer is it's fine for me but you mentioned that you gather so many informations uh, in Poland so having this information in your opinion is the right moment that the European Commission should trigger the conditionality mechanism against or for Poland uh, when and uh, in your opinion it should be the full a uh, uh, blockade of funds for Poland, or at least uh, part of it. What is your opinion? Thank you. Well, first of all, let me make clear that we're talking about a regulation, which is EU law, binding law. It doesn't need further development in the domestic legal systems of every member state is directly effective and it's to be implemented ever since it enters into force. That's the position that's been held by the European Parliament all the way. It's just been confirmed 100% by the European Court of Justice, ruling no surprise for the European Parliament. Second, it's binding law for all the member states, not only for Poland, not only for any other not even for those who are subject to Article 7 procedure. It's binding for all the member states. It means that it was never true that the regulation was suspended because of an appeal that was filed against the regulation by some member states, Poland and Hungary. It was already effective and binding law for all the member states, including those who appealed. Third, the consequences are to be drawn by the Commission. Fourth, no one in the European Parliament is willing those consequences to be fully executive 
on the grounds on which the regulation has been set forth. We all want Poland to comply with EU law just like the rest of the member states, with the same obligations. Being a member state is not only a matter of rights and having access to EU funds, cohesion, structural funds, and financiation from the EU budget. It's also a matter of obligations, including that of respecting EU law, and that is the same rule for all of the member states. Why shouldn't it be for Poland? The consequences are to be drawn by the Commission. And finally, it's not only that the European Parliament does not want those ultimate consequences to be executive. It is that we are here minding very carefully that we are protecting Polish citizens' rights on the grounds that they are European citizens for being Polish citizens and Poland being a member state of the European Union. All Polish citizens are European citizens and we are here representing the Polish citizens and minding for the rights. That is why in the regulation there are clauses to make sure that when needed the implementation of that regulation should reassure that the EU money makes it all the way to EU citizens' needs, families, farms, entrepreneurs, businesses, but with no mediation of the member state which is in non-compliance of EU law. That is a legal framework, and it's binding for all of us. So it's a situation that we have never liked to happen, but uh, now that we have seen the ruling confirming every word of the regulation, the duty of the Commission is to exert its obligation as guardian of the duties and EU law. That is the task of the Commission, and that's what we, the European Parliament, demand from the Commission. That would be the answer. Maybe my colleagues would like to complement. Would you? Proszę w takim razie o następne pytanie. Kto się zgłasza? Proszę sygnalizować. Bartku. Zuzanna Binkowska, the Fund 24. So just to sum it up, what are your main conclusions after the meetings that you have he had here so far? How would you describe what's your view on the, of the rule of law in Poland? And also some of the judges that you've met yesterday, um, they tell us like countless, countless times that the, um, the main concerns about the rule of law in Poland is just the effect of the misunderstanding, that they just didn't have of the misunderstanding that they didn't have an opportunity to show you how it works in Poland. So after you've seen their perspective, would you say that it's, it changes anything? Thank you. It is not a misunderstanding. The situation is totally clear and everybody mentioned it. It is, we have to re, re uh, construct the rule of law and the independence of the different bodies in Poland and that is the main uh, point and the court of, uh, of the, the court of justice said also very clear in some decisions some decisions in Poland are against European law and somebody is also saying against the Polish treaty. The independence of justice is very important and that is the key issue. And the implementation of the decision of the Court of Justice uh, is to implement 100%. That is not a misunderstanding. And, uh Maybe I can add to this. For us, it was also important to talk to people about the three bills that are discussed at the moment here. And we wanted to know uh, the assessment of the different stakeholders and experts if they really comply with the ECJ rulings or not. Uh, and also to have up-to-date information on this. We know it's still an ongoing process, but we as a parliament, we will have a severe analysis, and I think everyone else, that whatever the final bill will be, it has to one that respects 100% the ECJ rulings. And this is not a question of how I have different interpretations. It is very clear and something um, that we will follow.
follow very thoroughly. Mamy następne pytanie, prawda? Dzień dobry, Michał Dobrołowicz, RMF FM, I want to speak Polish. Chciałbym zapytać, czy będą kolejne podobne wizyty? Co dalej Państwo planują, jeśli nie będzie reakcji po tych Państwa zaleceniach, po Państwa stanowisku? I czy mogą Państwo konkretnie podać przykłady polityków w tych sytuacji, gdy nie było chęci spotkania się, była tutaj mowa o osobach o odmiennych poglądach? Czy możemy prosić o więcej szczegółów? Dziękuję. It's never, like never before, a law-making body. The European Parliament makes laws which are binding for all the member states and meant to protect citizens' rights. That means that citizens are entitled to claim and seek for justice and remedies when non-compliance with EU law all the way through the structure of the judicial system of the domestic judicial systems of every member state and the European scale if needed. That means the ultimate guarantee of the European Court of Justice. And that means that it is to the Commission to make sure that it enforces its role as guardian of the treaties of EU law. When there is non-compliance with the warnings and the decisions that have been made by the Commission in that regard, there are fines to be paid for. And ultimately, there can also be heavy economic fines imposed by the European Court of Justice for non-compliance with EU law. That is serious enough in my understanding. That is serious enough because I don't see the gain in that kind of a sequence, which is most, most worrisome. But not for the European Parliament. It's worrisome for the European Union in all, and it's worrisome for the citizens of the European Union in every member state, including Poland. I don't see the gain of attack of war between Polish authorities and the European Court of Justice summing up and scaling up the amount of the fine to be finally paid. Because certainly, one way or the other, it shall be finally paid if needed. The mechanism goes that member states contribute to the financiation of the EU budget. But if there is no compliance with EU law, all of the funds may be frozen, retained at origin by the Commission, including the fines to be paid imposed upon that non-compliant member state by the European Court of Justice. So that means that in the end, the balance to be struck will be negative. Negative for the citizens of the non-compliant member state. Is that a good news? I don't think so. That is a very worrisome horizon. But that is the rule of the game. That is the rule here. And we are all bound by the same rules. That is, that is the short answer to the complexity of the question that you have just raised. Because we are here precisely to take stock of the situation as it unfolds. And believe me, it has been quite an experience to hear the testimonies of those time and again, time and again, time and again, uh, sharing with us not only the evidence, but also the personal experience of the issues which are at stake. The disciplinary chamber that has been declared illegal according to EU law by the European Court of Justice still in place, imposing disciplinary measures on judges which are suspended in their functions. We heard them, their personal testimonies. And of course, that is a lesson that will have its consequences in the work, kind of work that is to be carried out in the foreseeable future. Maybe my colleagues would like to complement. Would you like to Just say something? One, one point. Firstly, the rule of law mechanism is an it was an initiative by the European Parliament. It is, a initiate, it is a big su political success of the European Parliament last year in the debate of the, of the net budget of the next six years. And the conditionality we decided in this case was supported now also after 
an, an intervention by Poland and, and, and Hungary by the Court of Justice. So this process is totally clear. And I said on the beginning in my statement, uh, the new judgment of the Court of Justice of the EU of 15 July 2021 must be fully 100% implemented. And I said before, and we demand from the European Commission not to release any money from the EU Recovery Fund before this key ruling has been fully 100% implemented. The decision of the Court of Justice and our common regulation and our common rules are the basic, are unite us. It's the basic to accept it. It's the basic for the identity and for the work of the European Union. So we will do everything to unite the European Union and not to divide it. And let me add to the question you had about whom we did meet here and whom we didn't meet. Uh, because indeed we came here as a parliamentary delegation with a broad spectrum that we have on political groups in the European Parliament. And uh, for us it was really um, a very unusual experience to put it really diplomatically that especially representatives of the government were not willing to meet the delegation of the parliament and to discuss the issues. And uh, I, uh, I would like to underline that there was a, a, a great disappointment also in the delegation of the parliament regarding this situation. And you know we are doing a quite a few missions. Uh, Poland is not the only country where we do different missions and this is uh, quite uh, outstanding there. Um, and um, we uh, have uh, underlined um, that uh, we wanted to meet everyone here and that it unfortunately uh, was not possible but we also learned from other international institutions here that organize dialogue between the different stakeholders also on the rule of law have the same experience that they for example always uh, invite also the Minister for Justice to engage in dialogue with different judges, prosecutor or members of civil society uh, and I think of the 13 dialogues they organized, they explained uh, our CE to us today, um, they had the same situation that the government was not participating, the ministers, thank you. Thank you very much. No, 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 we are not ending the conference yet. Uh, you, you still have time to, to stay with us for a few moments. We have questions arriving also via slider application, but for the time being, we will ask uh, questions from the floor. Jeżeli są wśród Państwa jeszcze osoby, które chciałyby zadać pytanie, to bardzo serdecznie zapraszam. Czy ktoś się zgłasza? W takim wypadku jeszcze pytanie. One question that we received via Slido from Oco Press. What exactly should be done to fully implement the ruling uh, of the Court of Justice? The details are all in the decision of the Court of Justice. The details stand in the uh, decision of the Court of Justice. Uh, and I think everybody knows uh, what is in and what we have to do to follow the decision of the court. Jeszcze pytanie. Piotr Kaczyński, Onet, Bartku. Piotr Kaczyński, Onet. Uh, thank you very much so far. A question about what is the biggest uh, surprise for you over those three days? Something new, because so far Honestly, I haven't, uh, I haven't learned anything new from you. Uh, so I'm just asking what is new over the last three days? Thank you. Maybe I can start yeah. with that. Oh. <laughs> um, I mean, if we are here on a mission, it's not to teach you something new about your country. That's uh, the first thing. But we are here to understand, to learn, to ask questions, to get answers to our questions. 
But I think what impressed me on one hand is this vibrant and active and strong civil society you have here in Poland, and that is such an asset. Uh, and I think um, the, also when I look, and I was also quite impressed by the judges and prosecutors here, that they continue to address the issues, not being intimidated, um, and I think under a lot of pressure also, um, I think this uh, gives also trust in, uh, in the society, in institutions, and this is a very important factor, um, and this is something um, I did find over the last three days uh, quite impressive, and this also gives me hope um, very much. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to confirm exactly what Gavi has just stated, because she represents so well, surely Otmar may complement the feeling of the European Parliament when being here in a member state of the European Parliament. No surprise, no surprise at all. First of all, the European Parliament represents the Polish people, the Polish citizenship, in its pluralism, and the pluralism is to be respected as it is in the European Parliament. In the European Parliament, there are Polish members coming from different political groups. There is a variety of them. But of course, the European Parliament mirrors the complexity and the pluralism of the European social fabric and it, every member state, including this. Second, we are well aware that within Poland strives and breathes a vibrant civil society worth of admiration. And if I may say, it is something really impressive that this vibrant civil society shows the courage to state its mind despite the political constraints that have been subject to discussion and arguments in the European Parliament time and again, including resolutions that have been voted, including Article 7 procedure, including, of course, the laws that we have put in place, rule of law, fundamental rights and democracy framework, and the rule of law conditionality, and the EU values and rights program, which is a binding financial budgetary instrument precisely to protect civil society, precisely to protect the rights which are enshrined by civil society. So we pay tribute to those testimonies. And of course, we were also very well aware that in the legal professions, there are many testimonies well worth hearing of directly, live, first-hand, flesh and blood testimonies of their everyday fight for EU values, EU values, EU rights, and their interpretation of what rule of law is about, which is compliance with EU law, first thing. So we have heard, no surprise, no surprise, that of course within Poland there are many, many, many willing to state it clearly that there is no incompatibility whatsoever between the Polish constitution and EU law. Willing to make it clear that there is no incompatibility or inconsistency whatsoever between Polish constitution and the European Convention of Human Rights. No inconsistency between the Polish Constitution and the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union. Because precisely on those grounds, Poland is a member state of the European Union. That's the way we want it to be. That is the way we, we, we are willing to, 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 to keep it. That is, that is exactly the point we are making here. So we are caring about this European dimension of Poland, European commitment of Poland, and no surprisingly, we heard many testimonies exactly making that point which is the point that has been embraced by the, by the official mission that brought us here. Otmar? Yes, any other question? Uh, I'm very glad that the heads found a way to conclude our press conference in an optimistic way, yes. with an optimistic accent. Thank you very much, everyone, for participating. Bardzo Państwu dziękuję za udział w konferencji. Do zobaczenia. Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you.